What's up, guys, and welcome, Daily Theologians. What connection does the Antichrist have to Hitler and the occult, and how is it connected to the church and what our calling is today and how to even recognize the church and what our responsibility is to the church? You're not going to want to miss this one as we talk about Hitler's strange fascination with the occult. Stick around and check this out. So it's not something that gets talked about often, but if you've ever seen the Indiana Jones movies, they do reference Hitler's obsession with the occult, and even uh, they show the Ark and some of the things, and that is actually not that far off. He was looking for things to gain the power to take over the world, and in this video, you're going to want to stick around for this clip because he becomes obsessed with the occult. Now, in our day, many people are uh, trying to figure out who is the Antichrist. There are many types of Antichrist, so we'll cover that. We'll cover what we should focus on, and we'll cover what the actual spiritual issue is here. But here is about a five-minute clip on Hitler's fascination and terrifying true story about his entanglement in the occult. ...which is maybe where Hitler connected to it. It is a bizarre kind of thing that... Uh, prompted Hitler, these demon um, communications prompted Hitler to use children. And that comes directly from the occult perceptions of the Hollow Earth Society. Uh, from that Hollow Earth perspective on children, he developed what was called the adolescent werewolves. These are the young children in black uniforms from the ages about 8 to 13 who had sinister death's heads on their sleeves, and Hitler at one point had 8.8 .8 million of such children, part of this demonic force. His Third Reich was entirely welded to black demonic occultism. Karl Haushofer was one of Hitler's generals and one of the earliest members of the German, what was called the Society of the Golden Dawn, founded for practices of black magic. It was Haushofer who encouraged Hitler, under demon influence, to write Mein Kampf, My Struggle. Haushofer had visited India, China, and Tibet, had adopted Buddhist beliefs, and uh, was essentially initiated into the secret Buddhist society, the occult black society from which the only escape was suicide, and he demonstrated some amazing demonic psychic powers. He had total control over Hitler. Haushofer was the black magician that controlled Hitler. Even Rudolf Hess said, Haushofer is the power, the magician behind Hitler and his demonic legions. That's a quote from Rudolf Hess. Haushofer was the magic magician. Uh, Hitler was the medium connecting with the demons. Swastika was a magical sign uh, from the Orient and Europe as well with demonic origins. By 1925, a group of Tibetan monks had moved to Berlin. They were members of a black order swearing allegiance to the powers of darkness, to Satan himself. From that time on, funds were made available by the Nazis to finance expeditions into Mongolia and into Tibet to connect m with more of these black monks to go deeper into the demonic world where Hitler wanted to extract the power to take over the world. When Germany fell, several hundred in SS death head uniforms were found to be Himalayan Orientals with no IDs. Rosenberg said they were the last of the black monks who had helped Hitler's dark, menacing movement. Rosenberg says in March of 1946, Haushofer killed his wife, then before a Buddhist altar killed himself. His son said he knew his father was the magician behind Hitler. The seven founders of Nazism were all deep into the occult. The Morning of the Magician says, and I quote, "'One cannot help but think of him as a medium, that is, Hitler. For most of the time, mediums are ordinary, insignificant people. Suddenly they are endowed with what seems to be supernatural powers. It was in this way, beyond any doubt, Hitler was possessed by forces beyond himself, demonic forces which the individual named Hitler was only the temporary vehicle." Those close to him said that when he spoke openly and in public, he had a completely different voice than his normal voice because demons were speaking through him. 
Quoting Hitler, he said, "'What will the social order of the future be? Comrades, I will tell you, over all will reign a new and exalted nobility of whom I cannot speak.'" He was literally talking about demon rule. He was possessed of Satan. He was the tool by which Satan thought to take demonic control over the whole world. In interviewing witnesses of Hitler's behavior, one eyewitness account was striking to me. Here's the record of an eyewitness. A person close to Hitler told me that he wakes up in the night screaming and in convulsions. He calls for help and appears to be half paralyzed. He is seized with a panic that makes him tremble until the bed shakes. He utters confused and unintelligible sounds, grasping as if on the point of suffocation. Hitler was standing in his room, swaying and looking all around as if he were lost. It's he, it's he, it's he. He's come for me, he groaned. His lips were white. He was sweating profusely. Suddenly he uttered a string of meaningless figures, then words and scraps of sentences. It was terrifying. Suddenly he screamed, there, there, over in the corner, he is there, all the time stamping his feet and screaming. So it, that may be surprising to you. Maybe you've heard that before, but the occult practices and evil go hand in hand. And throughout history, there's been this question about who is the Antichrist. Well, many such Antichrists have appeared. Anyone who opposes Jesus or says that Jesus did not come in a body is has a spirit of the Antichrist. And we've seen throughout church history, people have tried to wrongly point at this person. In fact, the London Baptist Confession points at the Pope, and they says he is the Antichrist. Now, you have to remember, they were enduring immense su uh, suffering, persecution, death, uh, things of that nature. So he is a type of Antichrist, but perhaps not the final Antichrist. And so we'll look at that in just a minute. But what is it that we need to remember here? Well, first, we have to know we have an enemy uh, coming in the final days called the Antichrist, who is a false messiah. This final man of lawlessness, this son of destruction, will be Satan's tool to destroy Israel, blaspheme God, blaspheme Christ, destroy all worship except the worship of himself, lead the entire world to hell. And as John said, there are many Antichrists. There's a spirit of rebellion at all times against God, against Christ. It's always been there. It's not new but it will find its way into this incredibly powerful final form. So we have to see the Antichrist is coming, and we have to be careful not to point or try to call out. Uh, in biblical prophecy, it would have been pretty clear, I think, that Nero was the one they were pointing at. Um, it wasn't like it was a secret. They were just using language to identify him in a, in a sense. That's my opinion. You don't have to agree with that. But basically, Nero was a type of Antichrist, clearly. The Pope was a type of Antichrist and is currently a type of Antichrist. And there will be a final Antichrist. And so the issue here is always going to be one of a spiritual problem. And we have to remember this. It's a heart issue. Things like this uh, with the Nazis going to the the other religions and, and sort of that sort of thing, that is real, and people are still doing it today. They play with it. They think it's not a big deal, but it is a huge deal because it's a spiritual power and force that affects the church. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the church. By the Father's appointment, all authority is conferred on him in supreme sovereign manner to call, institute, order, and govern the church. The Pope of Roman Catholicism cannot in any sense be the head of the church. Rather, is a antichrist. They say the. I would say a. The man of lawlessness and the son of destruction who exalts himself in the church against Christ and all that is called God. The Lord will destroy him with the brightness of his coming. So sh harsh words, and you don't have to agree with every single sentence in the confession, but that's one that they went for it. And I think uh, time has shown they missed it. Uh, that was not correct for their time, but it could be fulfilled in the future. The Catholic that is universal church may be called invisible without respect to the internal work of the spirit. So it's a spiritual problem, it's a spiritual nature that we have as the bride of Christ. And the truth of grace, it consists of the full number of the elect who have been, are, or will be gathered into one under the head, Christ. The church is the spouse, the body, the fullness of him who fills all and is in all. So we have to remember, we are the hope of the world. By God's sovereign grace, we have been saved, redeemed, called to be together. And the issue for every person, the issue of the Antichrist, the issue of the unbelief, the issue of the evil around us, it's one that you may not suspect.
thing I want to get across to you is this, that unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, let me just stop for a minute. That's not Billy Graham. And it's not R.C. Sproul. And it's not some television evangelist making that declaration. It is not Augustine. It's not Aquinas. It's not Athanasius. It's not Luther. It's not Calvin. It's not Edwards. It is Jesus, the founder of the Christian faith, who is now making a statement that calls attention to something that is necessary for every human being. So the church isn't around to say, clean up your act, get better, try harder, do better. It's a spiritual problem. We're a spiritual group of people that God has chosen to redeem and save. We understand the times. We understand the truth. We understand the death, burial, and resurrection of the God-man, Jesus Christ. Only because of God's sovereign grace, we've been born again to a living hope. So we're sealed for the day of redemption. Those that our names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life since before the foundation of the world. I think it's Revelation 14, 13 or 14. Uh, That is the case. We are Christians by God's sovereign grace alone. It's a spiritual issue. So remember, we are the hope and light of the world but it's only the grace of God that saves anyone at all. You must put all of your trust in the life, death, burial, and resurrection of the God-man Jesus Christ because there is coming an adversary. There is coming a final once-for-all antichrist, and he's in the world now. He's acting upon people and systems in the world now, and he's acted on people and systems in the past, and the the good example of that being Hitler, and uh, there are many such people like that. The Holy Spirit is perhaps restraining now or will perhaps remove his restraint and the man of lawlessness will be revealed. I don't know. Don't set dates. Don't get obsessed with prophecy. Know that the church is the hope and the light of the world. So if you're still watching this, take a moment and hammer that like button. Like the 95 Theses and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And thank you so much and God bless.